We all have things that we're good at and things that we're not good at. We all have strengths. We all have weaknesses. And let me tell you something, it's good to know what you can do, but it's even better to know what you cannot do. And don't make a fool out of yourself spending your life trying to be something you're not to prove something you don't even have to prove. How many of you have one of these tonight? Take your Bible and hold it up, okay? Or your phone or whatever it is you're using. I'm still trying to get used to the, everybody looking at their phone for a Bible. You know what, I, I'm a word person. The words in here have changed my life. They've changed me. And they'll change you. The word is the absolute truth of God. John 8 says, if you continue in my word, you will, you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. Amen. How many of you love the word? How many have made your mind up you're going to stick with the word no matter what? Amen. All right, why don't you be seated and we're going to have some word tonight. I think you've already had a bunch of word, but we're about to have a little bit more. Hey, ladies, did you know that they have opened up a new store in New York City? Anybody heard about the new store in New York City? It's called the Husband Store. And you can go there and shop for a husband. There are six floors in this store. <laughs> you can only visit each floor one time though. And each floor you go up, the value increases. You may choose any item from any particular floor but you cannot, you can go up a floor, but you cannot go back down. So there was a woman who went to the husband store to find herself a husband. On the first floor, the sign on the door read, these men have jobs. That sounded good, these men have jobs. Floor two says, these men have jobs and love kids. Floor number three said, these men have jobs, love kids, and are extremely good looking. Wow, she thought, this is sounding pretty good, but I'm compelled to go on to the next floor. Well, she does go to the fourth floor and the sign reads, these men have jobs, love kids, are drop dead, good looking, and they help with the housework. Oh, mercy me, she said, I can hardly stand it. Still, she said, I've got to go on. She went to the fifth floor. These men have jobs, love kids, are drop dead gorgeous, help with the housework, and have a very strong romantic streak. But she couldn't stand it. She decided she had to just find out what was on floor number six. Floor number six said, you are visitor 31,456,000. To this floor, there are no men on this floor. This floor exists solely as proof that women are impossible to please. <laughs> amen, 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 amen. All right. You want to do one more? You want one more little funny before I start? Maybe being not so funny, we'll see. Nine words that women use. And men need to really understand these words. The first one is fine. How many of you ladies can do it? Fine. Okay. This is the word that women use to end an argument when they're right and you need to shut up. Fine. Five minutes. Now, if she's getting dressed, that means a half an hour. Five minutes is only really five minutes if you've just been given five more minutes to finish watching the game before you're supposed to help with housework. 
The next word, a very important word, nothing. What's wrong, honey? Nothing. This is the calm before the storm. This word nothing means something and you should be on your toes. Arguments that begin with nothing almost always end with fine. Go ahead. This is a dare, not permission. Do not do it. A loud sigh. This is actually a word, but it is a nonverbal statement that is very often misunderstood by men. A loud sigh means that she thinks you're an idiot and wonders why she's wasting her time standing here arguing with you about nothing. For the meaning of nothing, refer back to number three. Number six, that's okay. That's okay. This is one of the most dangerous statements <clears throat> that a woman can make to a man. That okay means that she wants to think long and hard before deciding how you're gonna pay for your mistake. Amen? Thanks. A woman is thanking you, don't question it, don't faint, just say you're welcome. I do wanna add in here a clause though. This is true unless she says, thanks a lot. That is pure sarcasm and she is not thanking you at all. Do not say you're welcome. Because if you do, that will bring on a whatever. And whatever is a woman's way of saying, whatever happens, I am not going to be happy. And number nine, don't worry about it, I got it. Just, just don't worry about this, I got it. That's another very dangerous statement, meaning that there is something that a woman has told a man to do now several times but is now doing it herself because he never did it. This will later result in a man asking, honey, what's wrong? For the woman's response referred to number three, which is nothing. <laughs> amen. It's good to laugh in the house of God, amen. Well, I wanna thank everybody for having me. I've was here two or three, I don't know, some years ago, but the bishop is persistent. He keeps at what he wants until he gets it, amen? I wanna to talk to you tonight about what to do when God does not pick you. <laughs> wow, what to do when God does not pick you. Well, in Psalm 37, verses one through three, which I've been preaching on a lot lately, the Bible says, do not fret yourself over evildoers, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass. Now that doesn't mean that we're supposed to be happy about them being cut down, it's just, thought I'd throw that out there but it's just prophesying what will happen to evildoers if they don't turn around. So bottom line is, is if you love God and you're called according to his purpose, people really cannot, they might temporarily take advantage of you or they might temporarily mistreat you, but sooner or later, God will get it away from them, and if he has to bring it through a thousand people, he'll bring it back to you multiplied many times over. Amen. Psalm 37 verse 3 says, trust in the Lord and do good. It does not just say trust in the Lord. It says trust in the Lord and do good. Two distinctly different things. 
And I love that verse because I think that many times people forget the second part. Well, I'm trusting God. Well, what are you doing? We need to trust God and do good. And I think do good has two different parts to it. I think doing good is being obedient to God, doing what you believe that He tells you to do. And I also think that doing good means just being good to people. You know that Christians are supposed to be good to other people. We're supposed to encourage and edify, and lift up, and smile at people, and make people happy, and help people, and give people some of our money if they need some of our money. Come on now. And I still think that we have a long way to go in learning what I believe is one of the biggest spiritual secrets in the Bible, and that is that you overcome evil with good. I said, you overcome evil with good. Whoever it is you're mad at for whatever they did to you, you're not hurting them at all. You're only hurting yourself. I said, you are not hurting them at all. You're only hurting yourself. Why do you want to spend your life mad at somebody that's out having a good time and don't even care that you're upset? But if you trust God and do good, The best thing you can do when you're hurting is go be a blessing to somebody else. Come on, I said the best thing you can do when you're hurting is go be a blessing to somebody else. Fret not yourself over evildoers, for in the end they shall, or soon they shall be cut down like the grass. Trust in the Lord and do good. You know, God does not have the same plan for everybody. He's got a good plan for everybody, but God does not have the same plan for everybody. And it seems like that two people can do the exact same thing right. This person's obeying God and this person's obeying God. And this person seems to get one type of reward or response from God. And this other person seems to get like a totally other response from God. Let's think about Noah for a minute. In Genesis chapter 9 verses 12 and 13, we see that after Noah obeyed God and he built the ark and he went into the ark and did everything that God asked him to do and when he came out, God gave him a sign to seal a new covenant with him that he would never again destroy the earth with water, and that sign that he gave him was a rainbow. I'm sure that after being in that ark for that long, with all those, I can't even imagine what that smelled like. <laughs> Just imagine. I'm sure that he needed a rainbow. <laughs> and some of you could use a rainbow day right now too. You know, I've never heard anybody say, oh, look at that stupid rainbow. I mean, everybody likes a rainbow. And boy, if we get a double rainbow, wow, look at the double rainbow. And some of you are like, yeah, I'm due for a double rainbow. Well, what if God doesn't give you a rainbow? What if he gives you what he gave Abraham? Abraham also was a man who obeyed God, made a lot of sacrifices. Genesis 12 says that God called him to leave his home and his family and everything that he was familiar with and go to a place that I will show you. God didn't even tell him where to go. I mean, really, God? You want me to walk away from everything and I don't even have one little smidge of a bit of evidence of what's going to happen next? How many of you hate it when God's telling you to let go of this, but he won't? Anybody ever make that statement? I just feel like I'm being pulled apart. Well, here's the thing. When you try to hold on to this while you're trying to take hold of that, see, you got to whoop, let go and trust yourself completely 
to God. That's scary. But people who are willing to do that are the ones really who become the world changers. And so after Abraham had done what God told him to do, and actually I want us to, to read Genesis 12, the first three verses, because it, it's actually really very exciting what God said to him. Now in Haran, the Lord said to Abram, go for yourself for your own advantage, away from your country, from your relatives and your father's house to the land that I will show you. So he's asking him to do a very hard thing, but he said, this is for your good. Do you know when God asks us to do hard things, it's not because he wants to just sit back and watch us suffer, it's always for our good. I said, it's always, 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 always for our good. And I will make of you a great nation. And I will bless you with an abundant increase of favors. And I will make your name famous and distinguished. And you will be a blessing dispensing good to others. This is, isn't this sounding good? I mean, I think this is sounding pretty good. Abraham's kind of like, oh, this, this may work out really good. And I will bless those who bless you, who confer prosperity or happiness upon you. And I will curse him who curses or uses insolent language toward you. And in you will all the families of the earth be blessed. Whoa. All right. So now God is ready to seal his covenant, his agreement with Abraham. And if we look at Genesis 17, just a few pages over. Verses 9, beginning in verse 9. And God said to Abraham, as for you, you shall therefore keep my covenant, you and your descendants after you throughout their generations. And this is my covenant, which you shall keep between me and you and your posterity after you. Every male among you shall be circumcised. Hmm. And you shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin and it shall be a token or a sign of the covenant, the promise of the pledge between me and you. And he who is eight days old among you shall be circumcised. Every male throughout your generation, whether born in your house or bought with your own money from any foreigner, not of your offspring. And he goes on and on and on. Everybody had to be circumcised. Circumcised means a cutting away of the flesh. Now here's what I wanna know, why did Noah get a rainbow? <laughs> and Abram got a circumcision. <laughs> I am not liking this. God, that is just not fair. <laughs> Hello, ladies. That is just not fair. I've been believing you, God, for so long to get married and she's already been married three times. <laughs> and, and you might not say it out loud, but you're thinking, and she's not nearly as godly as I am. <laughs> we just don't do good with the fair thing. But I can tell you that the greater God is going to use you, <laughs> now don't, don't get me wrong, God used Noah. He was an awesome man of God and God really used him, but Abraham was used in a much greater way. So Noah got the rainbow, he did his job here, have a present. But Abraham had some stuff. He had some stuff. <laughs> Anybody got any stuff? He had some stuff that needed to be cut off. <laughs> Come on. Because God had a greater plan for him. 
You know, I was grumbling to the Lord one time about how it just seemed to me that he just wouldn't let me do hardly anything. And you're always, you can't do this, you can't do that, you can't do this, you can't do that. And I saw other people, people in ministry doing those things, people serving God doing those things. But and so I'm like, I don't understand God. And this is what the Lord said to me. And maybe somebody here tonight needs to hear this. Look, Joyce, you've asked me for a lot. Do you want it or not? Have you asked God for a lot? I wonder who's in here that said, God, use me to change the world. Oh, honey, 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 honey. Let mama counsel you. <laughs> Use me to change lives. Or how about this one? Jesus, I want to be just like you. Oh, my goodness. I surrender all. <laughs> Oh, we love to just get the goosebumps in church. <laughs> Lord have mercy. You got to get something in here tonight that you can take home with you because the truth is you got to go home. And I can't promise you that any of the ugliness at home is going to look any better when you go back than it did when you left it. But I can promise you that you can be different. You can be different. <laughs> Thank you. You know, in Genesis 12, when God was reading all that great stuff to Abram, oh, I'm gonna, make, I'm gonna make your name famous and you're gonna be rich and you're gonna have this and do that and you're gonna have favor and you're gonna end up being a blessing to everybody. To me, it was kind of like, if you go out and you buy a puzzle, we always buy it based on the picture on the box. <laughs> Come on. 6,000 piece puzzle. <laughs> See, you're smart, you know where I'm going. And that, boy, that's really pretty. Awesome. So you take that dude home and you get your puzzle table out. Man. <laughs> what have I done? So we start with the easy stuff. We get all the straight edge pieces. Come on, let's start with easy stuff. Let's do the easy stuff. So you get all the straight edge pieces and so you, now you have this outline. You still really don't have anything, but. <laughs> and then it's like, there's like, I don't know, a thousand blue pieces. A thousand pieces of blue sky. <laughs> and after about three weeks, you are so fed up with putting together blue sky. Come on, and we got some people in here tonight, you are like fed up with blue sky in your life. You've had blue sky till you just like, I cannot do the same thing anymore, God, over and over and over and over and over and over again. So then maybe you go to green grass. <laughs> and there's 2,000 pieces of that. A dream comes to pass with much business and painful effort. That's Ecclesiastes, I'm not making it up. And painful effort. None of us have the time for me to stand here and tell you what it's taken to get from where I started <laughs> to where I am. We don't ha I don't have that much time left to live, to tell you that. 
and nobody really knows but you and God what it costs you if you're going to fully and completely do the will of God because you'll be judged and criticized and people will not understand you and people are going to be jealous of you and they're going to be critical of you and you're going to be disappointed and sometimes you're going to be disappointed with God and there's going to be all kinds of things that are not going to be fair as far as looking at them in the natural and you just want a rainbow. <laughs> but you keep getting a circumcision. <laughs> and then, you know, it wasn't just Abraham that got circumcised. Everybody had, all the men had to get circumcised. I don't think he was probably a very popular guy. <laughs> and sometimes even the people that are gonna work with you and be around you and help you and whatever God's called you to do, then they've got to all get circumcised. Because, you know, sometimes you're just like, you're waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. You're just like, God, I know I'm ready. I know I'm ready. I know I'm ready. <laughs> and one time the Lord told me, he said, yeah, you are ready. But he said, all the people that you need to help you aren't. So you're going to have to be still and wait on them. <laughs> you can't do it by yourself. And then, you know, there's those pieces that you're just fed up with this thing. And so you're just like, that's going in there. <laughs> I don't care if this fits or not. You know what I'm talking about, amen. But let me tell you something, sometimes there's those pieces in your life that just don't make any sense and you can't find any place to put it. You can't find any place in the picture that you feel like God showed you, the picture on the box, you can't find anywhere to put that piece. It doesn't make sense. Why God, why? So you have to just set that piece aside and just pray over that piece. <laughs> Ladies, we live life forward, but we understand it backward. We don't understand everything that happens to us, do we? But it will fit. Romans 8, 28. <laughs> but now here, listen, all things work together. Each thing may not be good, but when you get them all together. <laughs> and see, we're, we're still waiting, some of us, for some of the things to come together. Amen? But I just want to tell you from experience and what I know from the Word of God, and I know that people try to cheer you up with this stuff all the time, but I mean it with all sincerity. God is faithful. And what you don't understand now, you may understand later, you may never understand it, but just because something hurts, that doesn't mean that it's bad. And just because something hurts, that doesn't mean that it's not God. The Amplified Bible in Proverbs talks about sanctified experiences that we have with God. There are things that we go through that may look like they're bad, but they've been sanctified by God for our spiritual growth and our character building and testing, the testing of our faith. Let me tell you something. We can shout and holler in church all we want to, but we don't know what we believe until it's tested. You don't what you believe until it's tested. And those tests are important because they put the devil in his place and they give us confidence and they make us strong. 
They make us strong. You know, when we don't get what we want and somebody else gets what we want. (laughs) Ooh, honey. It is hard. One of the ways that God deals with us, believe it or not, is He will let somebody else get what we want and make us watch. And then tell us that we have to be happy for them. Now that's the killer right there. So I'll tell you a couple of stories to kind of get it into practicality for all of us. And this is so funny now when I think about it. Back in the 70s and 80s, boy, having a fur coat was like a big status symbol. And if you could march into the church with your fur coat and sit on the fur coat row. (laughs) Am I right? If you can come in and sit on the fur coat row with all the other fur coat, that proved that you know how to believe God for stuff. My faith is working, you see this fur coat. God, Lord, help us. And uh, so, I mean, I'm believing God for a fur coat. I mean, I, I did the whole fourth dimension thing. I saw it in my eyes. I knew the color. I mean, I, you know. The four laws of faith, I had it. I claimed it, I named it, I saw it, I believed over it. One day my doorbell rang and it was a girl that that I loved with the love of the Lord. (laughs) But I didn't like her. Matter of fact, she annoyed the living daylights out of me. I love you with the love of the Lord. (laughs) Whatever that is, I'm still trying to figure out what that is. And she had this huge box. She was so excited. She said, you are not going to believe what somebody gave me. In my house, she brought it to my house. My fur coat. Somebody gave her a fur coat. And she was not nearly as spiritual as me. I even tithed on my birthday money. I was so spiritual. I fasted until I almost died. I mean, you understand, I was... Miss Ministry Spiritual. (laughs) Now, I honestly thought they had to deliver it to the wrong house (laughs) because she lived next door to me. Well, I tell you what, when I saw that box, when I saw that coat, everything, I mean, I was mad at her. I was mad at God. I was mad, I was, I was just like, jealousy and rage and resentment. Come on. Oh, praise the Lord. Oh, yeah, that, oh, that's really pretty. Oh, yeah, I'm thinking, God, if you don't get her out of here, I am going to kill her. You have got to make her leave. Well, see, here's the thing. I'm like, oh God, I want to go all over the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And I just said, I want to be like you, Jesus. And so the last thing I needed was a fur coat. (laughs) That was the last thing on the earth, on the planet that I needed. What I needed was circumcision and pruning. And I needed God to deal with me. And I needed to get rid of the jealousy. And I needed to get rid of the resentment. And I needed to have right motives. We want God to work on the outside, and He wants to work on the inside. 
And when the inside gets right, it'll make its way to the outside, and all of these things will be added unto you. <coughs> well, I had kind of a little epiphany the other day because I finally got a fur coat. Actually, more than one. I had people were giving me fur coats. I had, you know, so I had fur coats. But I had the 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 only one that I kept is in the basement, hanging in a closet. And you know, people don't even wear them anymore. And she and and it was hanging kind of lopsided on the hanger, which made it look really pitiful. So I happened the closet door in the basement was open where we keep some extra stuff, and I happened to see this fur coat hanging over in the corner, kind of sort of in the dark, kind of crooked on the hanger. And I thought, <laughs> it's just like it brought back all the stupidity <laughs> and the, <coughs> the childishness of what I thought was important at that time that was not important at all. But I had to live life to then look back and see how utterly ridiculous it was. Come on, give God a big praise. Well, see, the fur coat piece of the puzzle When my friend got my fur coat, and she's not nearly as spiritual as me, I did not understand that. So I had to set it aside over there somewhere. <laughs> and actually, I mean, I got it before, but if nothing else, last week when I looked in the closet, man, <laughs> that piece went right into place. <laughs> it was like, oh yeah, God, you gave it to her purposely and you made me watch because you were after something in me that had to come out in order for me to be here where I'm at today. Come on now, you've asked God for a lot, do you want it or not? I said, you've asked God for a lot. Do you want it or not? Then it's not gonna be all rainbow days for you. The apostle John had a little nicer word for it. He called it pruning <laughs> in John 15. If you don't bear fruit, you'll be pruned away, cut off, trimmed off. And if you bear fruit, you will be pruned so you bear richer and more excellent fruit. So I got the revelation early in my walk with God. You're pruned if you do and pruned if you don't. <laughs> so we might as well just ask for the version that's going to do us some ultimate good somewhere down the line. Amen? <laughs> Trust God and do good. Your church has 200 people for the last 10 years, and a new guy comes to town and has 1,000 people in four months. And you get stuck sitting next to him at the leader's luncheon, <laughs> where he spends the whole time telling you all about his church. Praise the Lord. <laughs> And then when you leave, God tells you to send him a generous offering <laughs> to help pay for the overflow room he now has to build <laughs> because his church is growing so rapidly. And everything in you is going, Ew, what? do you hate me? <laughs> but when you obey God, when it hurts so bad, you feel like you just cannot stand it. I said, when you obey God, when it hurts so bad that you feel like you just cannot stand it. That's when you become 
dangerous to the devil. Amen. And the pain doesn't last forever. I tell you, when I look back at what I went through, oh my God. I mean, I was abused by my dad, and so I had all, I mean, you talk about dysfunction. I mean, I was the queen of dysfunction. And I mean, even, <laughs> well, it's too long of a story to try to get into, but when I look back at everything that I went through, and I am so happy now, I am so peaceful. I am so blessed. My kids are saved. I'm, my husband and I, Dave's over here, stand up, Dave. Dave and I have been married almost 50 years. Yay. Dave's been in a gazillion women's meetings. We've been married 48 and a half years. Man, I tell you, when him and I first got married, I mean, if you even tried to tell me anything, fire shot out of my eyes. <laughs> and now I, would it, would it be, I wouldn't be stretching it to say that I'm a submissive wife, would I? <laughs> See? I am. Dave knows what I'm called to do and he blesses me in doing it. And it's obvious that, you know, I'm a woman, but I'm not his teacher, I'm his wife. Amen. And that's where women get mixed up when they want to be used by God. They start thinking now they're everybody's teacher and everybody's boss because they're anointed now. <laughs> Amen. One of the main reasons why our ministry has had such longevity and why we're being able to help so many people is because things are right behind the scenes at home behind closed doors. Amen. What happens if you write your book and it sells 25,000 and a friend of yours writes one that you don't even like and it sells a million copies? <laughs> your friend gets the promotion at work that you wanted and believe you deserve. Your friend loses 30 pounds walking and drinking lots of water. tell me that one time. She lost a lot of weight and I said, oh, how'd you lose weight? She said, I just started walking and drinking a lot of water. <laughs> and I could starve for four months and lose two pounds. <laughs> well, she must just have a fast metabolism and you feel like yours is in a coma. Can we once and for all start working toward being completely free from competing with one another and comparing ourselves with each other? We do it in the church over spiritual gifts and everything else imaginable. Well, I should be singing in the choir. My voice is a lot better than yours. And on, 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 on it goes. Now, you know what, really, when you get right down to it, what difference does it really make what we're doing as long as we're serving God and living for Him? <clears throat> now, I'll admit, you know, I've got a few years on me now, and the longer you live, the more you realize how stupid some stuff is. So that, that is a great benefit of living a while and getting a little bit older. Because then you can look back and 
By then, most of your puzzles put together, there might be a few pieces missing, but you, you got most of it, you're understanding most of it, you know, it's coming together. But boy, am I a lot smarter than I was when I was 42 and 50 and so many things that were so important to me then just don't mean anything <laughs> to me now. Amen? We're either going to get down to God's business or what's the point? And, and we're going we're to have a turnaround and instead of telling God what He's got to give us every day to keep us happy and saved, well, God, if I don't get a breakthrough, I just don't think I can hold on. <laughs> what we're going to do is we're going to turn around and we're going to say, God, from now on, I want to know what you want. I just want to know what you want, and no matter what it costs, I want you to give me the grace to be obedient to you because I love you, there's nobody like you, and I can do without a whole lot of other things. I can do without a man, I can do without a fur coat, I can do without a promotion, I don't have to sing in the choir, but I cannot do without you. I've got to have you, and not a little bit of you, all of you. Amen? God, you do what you want to in my life. And, and this is what I pray. And God, if you have to tie me to the altar, no matter how much I kick and scream, I'm making the commitment right now. I want to go all the way with you. And when I try to turn back, don't let me. Your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. I don't want to be unkind, but I just want to say that I am just so fed up with selfish, self-centered, whining Christians. That felt good to get that out. <laughs> I mean, I was one for God knows how long. And it just isn't pretty. Amen. Verse 19, but he said this to Peter to indicate to him what kind of death he would die. And then he said to him, follow me. Now, verse 20, <laughs> this is so stinking good. But Peter turned, this is Peter's response to what Jesus just said to him. But Peter turned and saw the disciple whom Jesus loved, and that was John. And this is the book of John that John wrote. And John refers to himself in the book that he wrote over and over and over as the one whom Jesus loved. Now, I know enough about Peter's personality because I've got it to know that he wanted to knock John's lights out. <laughs> so, Peter right away turns to Jesus and says, what about John? <laughs> it's kind of like, is he going to suffer too? <laughs> Come on, you know, sometimes if we're not really all that crazy about somebody, and we're going through a rough time and they've got it easy. Boy, is that annoying. <laughs> Woo. And then I love this. Samuel went to anoint a new king and all of the brothers were brought in and none of them were right, weren't right, weren't right, weren't right. And then they finally brought in David. And you would have thought that Samuel could have taking him aside privately so as to not hurt the other brother's feelings. Don't want to make them feel bad that they've been rejected. Oh, I love this. The 
this is why I do this, because I have so stinking much fun preaching. <laughs> Verse 13, 1 Samuel 16, 13. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed David in the midst of his brothers. <laughs> Put him that little scrawny sheep keeping baby brother set him right in the middle of all of them that had been rejected and poured the anointing oil on him, made him king and made them watch. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Maybe you're having to watch somebody else right now, but someday you'll be anointed king and somebody else will have to watch. Let's even put it better than this. Many of you are already anointed to be king, but you have to realize that David did not wear the crown for 20 years after he was anointed. He spent those 20 years in caves running from a crazy man. Ooh boy, I can see you guys are about to wear out. I better bring this to a close. Okay, one, one final thought here, Rachel and Leah. Have you ever had any sibling rivalry? Were you ever the kind of fluffy sister that had the skinny sister? Oh my gosh. I see situations like that all the time. One sister is so sweet, she just drips sugar when she opens her mouth. And she forgets to eat. The other sister lives in the refrigerator. And okay, well, let's, let's get to this. In Genesis 29, there were two sisters, Leah and Rachel. Jacob loved Rachel, but Leah was the oldest and he got stuck with her, had to work seven more years for Rachel. But the thing the Bible says, which is amusing to me, is that Leah had dull, weak eyes. <laughs> I think that's a real godly way of saying she just flat out wasn't very pretty. <clears throat> Maybe even downright ugly, I don't know. <laughs> and, and in the same verse, Leah had dull, weak eyes, and Rachel was beautiful. Okay, but now listen, 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 because this is so good. But one of the things that, uh, so eventually Jacob's got both of them as wives, and one, one of the things that was extremely important to women then was to be able to have children and an heir for the bloodline. And so the Bible says that Leah gave birth to seven children and Rachel had to watch and she never had one during that whole time. Now later, she did have two, but years and years and years, okay, she had the sparky eyes, but she didn't get the babies. Leah had the dull, weak eyes, but she got the babies. Let me tell you something. Whatever you don't have, God will give you something else to make up for it. Come on now. Whatever you don't have, God will give you something else to make up for it. And here's what I've come to. Everybody gets something, and everybody doesn't get something. I can preach, but I cannot sing. I can manage a worldwide organization, but I tell you what, even my stick people when I draw them are scary. We all have things that we can do and things we can't do. We all have things that we're good at and things that we're not good at. We all have strengths, we all have weaknesses. And let me tell you something, it's good to know what you can do, but it's even better to know what you cannot do. 
and don't make a fool out of yourself spending your life trying to be something you're not to prove something you don't even have to prove. Come on, give God a praise. Amen, 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 amen. Woo, 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 woo. So what do you do when God doesn't pick you? You trust him. And you say, God, I know that you will never do anything unless it's gonna work out for my ultimate good. And I'm not in this with you, God, to get what I want. I'm in it for what you want. Yes. 